today I'm going to talk about resilience. And I've got a quote from Nelson Mandela. The greatest glory in living lies not in never falling, but in rising every time we fall. Now, I can only imagine that most of you know who he is, but for anyone who doesn't, he basically went from prison to president. Now, that's a pretty uh, impressive way to show resilience, and he, he obviously did that, so I thought that would be a great way to start. So basically, by the end of this session, I'm going to talk about four different ways that you can build resilience in yourself and in others. And we're going to talk about what is resilience? Why is resilience important? How do you increase resilience in yourself and others? And then the outcomes that you will learn, you'll be left with a clear understanding of what resilience is. And I'm actually going to tell you what resilience isn't as well. You will learn why resilience is important and you'll be taught a four-step process in developing resilience in yourself and your children. Resilience is the ability to withstand disappointment and failure, manage the unexpected, find creative solutions to problems, bounce back in the face of adversity and emotional hurts. Resilience allows people to move through trials and tribulations with flexibility and courage. Now that's a good educational definition of resilience, but I don't want to leave it there. I'd like to give you a, an analogy to take home. And I like in resilience a bit like riding a bike in life. Now all of you are, are very different to each other and your children are most probably different to you. And there'll be different types of personalities. So some of you might choose a motorbike and others, lots of mums would choose not a motorbike and would not like their children to be on a motorbike. But we won't go there. Or you might choose a, more, a, a bike that you'd like to ride along a river, you know, that you might have that more per personality. Or you might choose a trick bike. Did anyone ever have a BMX? Did tricks on their BMX? I actually didn't. Or you might choose a mountain bike for the more fitness freaks among us, which is probably me. But basically, the thing that's in common about riding a bike is at some point in life, you could be pushed off your bike or other times you might go down a big ditch and you might fall off your bike. Sometimes in life, your bike actually starts to break down and you need to fix your bike. And resilient, a resilient person would choose to get back on their bike. And so I wanted to leave you that with that analogy that resilience is like riding a bike and there is one given, something will go wrong in life and I'm sure you've already experienced that. And as parents, we need to be able to teach our kids how to get back on their bike. Sometimes we need to teach them how to fix their bike. But it's really important that we teach them how to do that because if they stay stuck, then that's not a good thing. And this is actually my, my father-in-law. He's not actually with us anymore, but I want to tell you a true story about resilience. And he was a very resilient man. He actually, for a very long time, suffered from Parkinson's. And at the late, latest stages of Parkinson's, he ended up in a wheelchair. And it was late in 2010. I knew I could rely on Andy for that. It's late in 2010. We got a phone call and we had to come to ICU. It's one of those phone calls you just don't want to get. And there was two stories that were happening at the time. So he ended up in ICU and the medical story was... He might have two or three days to live and he would never get out of hospital. But Don's story was different. He got out of ICU and as soon as he could, he could speak, which he struggled to do anyway, as soon as he could speak, he had three things that he wanted to achieve. The first thing was he wanted to go fishing because he loved fishing. The second thing he wanted to do is he wanted to go back to his church family and worship. And the third thing that he wanted to do he wanted to go back and live with his wife where he'd always lived. So he had three very clear goals. Within three weeks, he was out, he was out of hospital and in rehab. Wasn't supposed to even get out of hospital. And in four weeks, Andy took him fishing with a big grin on his face and he didn't even catch anything, but he was just happy to be outside and fishing. Within six weeks, 
he went to his church family and I remember that day very vividly. Andy, he was in his wheelchair and we, we went down to the middle aisle and we usually sit up the front, probably two or three rows from the front. And June was on one side, his wife, and Andy was on the other side. And as soon as the music played, Don motioned to get up. Very difficult for him to stand up. So he was supported by June on one side, Andy on the other side, and then I think two other men behind, and he got up to praise his Lord. There was not a dry eye in the audience. We didn't find that out till later after the service because he had overcome so much to be there. And it was a true example of what resilience is, that he just kept going. And within 10 weeks, he was back home with his wife being cared for. And he lived a further two years after that incident. He was a great role model to all of us who knew him. So how did he do it? What were the key points that helped him be resilient? Well, the first thing is he had three clear purposes. He was going fishing, he was going back to church and he was going home. And then he made a plan. He found out what was it that he had to do to make that happen. And when I used to go and visit him in rehab, we used to go and we'd play, play games and stuff like that and he'd be moving all the time because he knew he had to move his legs so he had enough power to stand up so he can get home. So he actioned that plan. He was in action all the time so he could reach his goals. And then the last thing that he had, he had an amazing attitude a never give up attitude. And he left a legacy for us as a family, which is fantastic. So he's a great model, a role model and an inspiration to all he met. So resilience is choosing to get back on your bike and keep riding even though when times are tough. So why is building resilience in your family so important? It helps you move from pain to empowerment. Don in ICU was in a lot of pain, but with the plan and with his courage, he kept moving forward. Susan Jeffers has got a great book called Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. And that's all about, you know, there's times where things are hard or there's times when our kids struggle to, to do something. And sometimes it's gonna, it's gonna hurt them in some way. But then as long as they're not in a dangerous situation, we need to give them that little step and then the next step so they can go from the painful experience, whatever that is, to empowerment and move on. John Maxwell's got a great book called Failing Forward. And that's all about making mistakes, learning from them and keeping going. And it, if we can teach our children that and ourselves that, then it helps us to keep moving forward in life. And it promotes quality of life. Don was a great example of that. He had every reason to be a grumpy old man. His body really didn't work very well anymore. But he still had a quality of life. He'd go, he'd go shopping when he could. He'd go out to dinner. He'd go to the movies. He'd go fishing. I remember one time where Andy took him fishing and he got him out of, he got him out of the wheelchair, which was all really good. And he got him to the car and he turned around and the wheelchair had gone in the water. I'm like, how are you going to explain that to your mum? That was all good. As long as Don didn't end up in the water, we were all fine. But it helps promote quality of life. So the bottom line is that our children will hopefully be on their own someday. I mean, as a parent, that's our ultimate goal, that we raise up functional, healthy kids that can contribute to society. We want them to have the skills to face their challenges and problems head on with guts. As loving adults in their lives, we can only foster this by teaching, modelling and letting them go. So resilience just helps them to move through hardships and challenges. It's really important to know what something is not. Resilience is not is not putting up with inappropriate or harmful behaviours. I mean, as adults, we're our children's advocate. And if they're in a dangerous situation, we need to do everything we can to get them out of that. So resilience is certainly not that. And it's also not stretching a child beyond what they can do reasonably for their age. I mean, 
we're very much into sport, Andrew and I, and if we took Jess down to the long jump pit at, at six years age and expected to jump five or six metres and kept making her do that, well then that's inappropriate, that's not resilient. So whatever it is our children have a challenge with, we need to break it up and make it age appropriate so they can do step by step. I remember with Josh and Lego, when he was little he said, I hate Lego and I couldn't work it out because I thought that he'd really enjoy Lego. But what I did work out was what he was really saying is, I don't know how to do it. And so what I needed to do is teach him how to do it. And so I broke it up and then we did little bit by little bit. And in the end, he ended up doing Lego for many, many years and he absolutely loved it. So it's about making it appropriate and breaking it up for them. So I want to go into four ways that you can teach yourself and children to build resilience. And the first one is faith. The second one is mindset. The third one is modelling and the fourth one is opportunities to grow. So I'm going to talk about faith and values. So this is all about what is it you really believe. Don had a strong faith and that was one of the things that helped him have such a quality of life because it gave him a reason to get up in the morning. It gave him the ability to keep going and it gave him a purpose. So as parents, we really need to know what it is that we believe before we can teach those sorts of things to our kids. And it gives you a reason to get back on your bike. If something's, if you've been knocked off your bike and you have a strong faith and a reason to get back on your bike, it's a lot easier to get back on and you get on a lot quicker. So what is your purpose in life? Why is it you do what you do? These are all hard questions to answer but really important ones to know. And then it's about family values. What are your family values? And if you haven't thought of that before, it's a good thing to work out. Both Andrew and my family values are based on, on a Christian perspective. And I remember uh, it was about two years ago, I had, we had a problem with our air conditioner. And one of our family values is honesty. And one of us, I'm not saying who, had been playing around with the remote and we jammed it and we thought it was broken. So what do you do? You ring the service guy and he comes, he knocks on the door and he comes in and, and he looks at it and he doesn't take very long and he says, there's nothing wrong with it. I said, oh, really? They said, yeah, yeah, there's nothing wrong with it, but they just changed the policy, so it's going to cost you $180. I said, okay. And he goes, but I hear a noise. I said, what do you mean you hear a noise? No, I hear a noise in the air conditioner. I'll just write it down. I hear a noise and it won't cost you anything. And I didn't feel comfortable with that because that wasn't honest. Now, I could have left it with him and saying, well, he was dishonest and leave it. But I decided, I said, no, actually, I don't feel comfortable with that. I prefer you just write the truth. Here's your $180. And he's looking at me really strange as if this is really weird. Anyway, he, he accepted that and he said, you know what, I'm going to service it for you. And then at least you've paid something for your money. I said, that's fine. And so he did, he serviced it and, and off he went and I paid the $180 and the kids go, what was going on there? And I said, oh, it cost me $180 to tell the truth today. So it's really important that we know our family values so that when things come on, we do have a moral compass to parent from. <laughs> 